Crossroads Media. April 3rd. The last time we felt this feeling, losing a series, that is, was April 3rd. That is bonkers. And that's exactly why all those dumbasses that pretended it wasn't a big deal that the Phillies were continuing to win, that's why I called them stupid idiots. Because you can lose to anybody, and that's what happened out in Colorado. Did not see that coming. Did not see Ranger Suarez's effort coming. Did not see Aaron Nola's day coming. Even though Nola still gave you a quality start, it took him a little while to settle in. And credit to Ranger. I mean, settling in is important. Going six is important, especially when you have no days off. You're going right to San Francisco. You're heading into another series, and you can't ask your bullpen to go a ton or else they will hit a wall. So to grab six, Six for both of those starters can be very valuable to the long run here. But look, I mean, this type of stuff happens. Unfortunately, the offense did go quiet. I almost wonder if they put a lot of pressure on themselves due to the fact that they were playing in Colorado. I did see some quotes post game flying around, and maybe they thought it would just happen naturally. Hey, they're one of the best teams in all of ball. They're going to a place where the ball flies. They're playing a team that absolutely stinks. It'll all work out. And maybe they just slip just a hair. All right, they let that wall, whatever that wall of energy was that was built behind them, they seemed so motivated. They seemed so ready and locked in every step of the way so far. Maybe they just let it slip just a tad. And this was a big wake-up call of, yo, fellas, it doesn't matter who it's against. It doesn't matter if the other team has a bad record or not. The second you let it may be for a second just slip right by you. And I'm talking that detail, the focus of detail, that sense of urgency. The second you don't have it fully wired in, anything goes. And that's exactly what happened here against Colorado. What I want to do is walk through my emotions in a timeline form dating back to Friday when Bryce Harper got ejected nice and early, which was a disgrace by 120. The guy doesn't even deserve to get recognized as a name, as a human, as life. No, no, he's just Mr. 120, the rando behind the plate who has no idea how to do his job. Yeah, that guy, it was just a joke, a joke. So we'll walk through the timeline. First, I do want to say happy memorial. Memorial Day, everybody. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you guys enjoy whether you're down the shore or whether you're with your family just having a barbecue in the backyard, some hot dogs, some burgers, some sausages, you name it. Um, and of course, remember those who did what they did so we can do what we do. That, of course, is a big part of Memorial Day. So do not let that go either. And I just want to make sure that that gets highlighted here before we really dive into the ins and outs of everything that happened. So let's get to game one. Bryce was ejected, and I was pissed, pissed, because all day long, all I was thinking about was first pitch. All right, it wasn't a 640 game, so you had to wait essentially two more hours. You're playing out in Colorado. So I woke up around, I don't know, 7, 8 a.m., made my pot of coffee, thinking of first pitch. Brooklyn took a shit. I changed her diaper, thinking about first pitch. I made dinner for me and the wife. Thinking about first pitch. So I'm telling you right now that all I was doing was thinking about this team keeping the hot run going as they started off electric and better than any team we've seen. It's all my mind was focused on. And the second it gets started, you kick out the face of the fucking franchise out of the game because you're a dumbass. I mean, it's just so stupid. How is that possible that that man has the audacity to just kick his ass out of the game? 
You're stupid. That's what it comes down to. You're stupid, and you want to play Mr. Tommy Tough Nuts and think that you have all the power. Bryce Harper is 50 fucking times more important than you, and I mean 50,000 times. I messed up. 50,000 times more important than you, and you robbed me of what could have been. And all I needed was one more run, maybe one home run from Bryce, and who am I to think that that can't happen? Because that's the same night that Jose Alvarado in the ninth gives up a solo jack where they lose the lead in the night. One more run, that's all I needed. And instead of Rojas batting in crucial parts of the game, it's Bryce Harper. Rojas gets slotted in there. Now he's batting third. It's a joke. And then, of course, the game in extra innings goes to him. He can't put down a bond. But Alec Bohm was up there too and I thought he had one of his most hideous at-bats of the entire season so they had bases loaded in extras I also had to watch one of the other umpires and I hate umpires they suck suck I had to watch JT Romuto have a beautiful check swing that gets called a strike and now that leads JT into grounding out because I think he tried to do too much because you know the, the count should not have been what the count was so it was very aggravating I guess you could say that there was a game not too long ago where Whit Merrifield got lucky and this is the baseball god somewhat evening it out but it doesn't make me feel any better because there's no way in hell that JT Realmuto swung that bad so it's irritating it really is but think about what it took for the Rockies to take game one your superstar gets thrown out of the game JT Realmuto's check swing gets called. Jose Alvarado allows a home run in the ninth when the game was basically over and you thought it was a dub and that thing gets jacked up. I Seriously, that guy! That guy hits the homer! And luckily it wasn't Jake Cave because for a little bit of time when he was in the batter's box, I thought, here we go, Jake Cave's totally gonna nail you, isn't he? He ended up striking out on a pitch that wasn't even close to the plate. So I guess in typical Jake Cave fashion here, here. He ended up going down, and I thought maybe the Phils could survive, but they couldn't. Now, I'm a little surprised, though. And by the way, there was some u other ugly stuff that went down in that one. If you remember, Cody Clemens turns two, and he ends up pulling Alec Bohm off the bag. Luckily, the ball bounced off something behind Bohm and went right back to him, but that could have been when you lost, so it was absolutely absurd. Just lucky uh, to, to kind of squeeze out that second game when it was late because it's possible that they would have got swept out in Colorado, believe it or not, which I'm not killing them for it after you win so many series in a row. Is it 15, 16, 17? I lost count. They've won so many series in a row. I truly can't even do the math in my head. So when you fall, okay, it is what it is, but let's go. I want to see them rebound. I want to see them respond. I want to see them sort of have that lift as soon as something negative happens, how do you internally look together at one another in that clubhouse when everyone's standing in front of their stall and go, yo, fellas, what are we going to do here? All right, let's go. The offense, when it's had quiet, our starting pitching, who was shoving, throwing seven innings pitch consistently, only allowing two word runs or so, well, it was a little bit different, right? Ranger, four walks, four earned runs, didn't get a lot of help defensively, Alec Bohm with the mishap, um, you know, Bohm, I think there's been times where he's been up at the plate where I wish he was a, a little bit smoother, so that's happening too. We got some upsetting news about Trey Turner, which we will play in just a moment here, but yeah, I mean, I want to see what this team is going to do, and I'm I'm not really concerned. I, I think they have the answer. I'm almost excited to see the answer that I know is inevitable, basically is the way I'm describing it. I'd be shocked. I'd be stunned if they just no-show against the San Francisco Giants. I think they're going to do exactly what we know this team is capable of, and that's send a damn statement, right? I mean, Kyle Schwarber hasn't shown a lot of power yet. Just wait for that to start happening. Things will turn around 
around for some of the ones that had some slower starts in their respected fields, meaning Schwarber's done some good things walking at the plate. He's had some singles that are important. Hell, he started things off when they dropped game one and game two started. Kyle Schwarber gets on base. Bryce Harper had insane numbers against their starter, so you can just write down that he was going to do something special. You take a one nothing lead, and, and it's like, here's the party. We're ready to rock, baby. We're throwing punches here. They came out of the gates, bang, right then and there, going after it. And uh, and then it kind of went a little south afterwards, but then we saw what happened late. Garrett Stubbs. Garrett Stubbs steals a bag. He basically scores a run just by his savviness of him doing a delayed steal. Nobody's covering third base. Then he hits a big, big, big RBI in the ninth. Edmundo Sosa, who has an RBI triple, and now he's scoring to take the lead. Bryce Harper's three-run bomb. You can never count this team out and I thought that that was such an awesome way to respond to that loss and I was just I guess a little shocked to see game three be so flat and Ranger almost get his head taken off with a line drive that was smoked right back up the middle absurd play just straight up absurd play um, when it was 5 nothing, though, it was 5-1, 5-2. You thought you could never count this team out, and that is absolutely a reasonable thought, but just sometimes it becomes super quiet, and that's what happened. But let's take a listen. Before we get an update on Trey Turner, and before I tell you my thoughts about what I heard about Bryce Harper and his ejection from Phillies fans, that actually made me a little bit sick to my stomach because I can't relate to that way of thinking. Let's take an actual listen to Bryce Harper post game in the clubhouse speaking about what happened when he got ejected Friday night. No, I mean, I, I wasn't really that upset. I mean, obviously, I spiked my helmet, but that was a frustration from the call. Um, and then I just kind of asked him, hey, I don't believe that was a strike, but where do you have it? Just so I know. And he kind of just was like, eh. And then I was just like, no, like, where do you have it? Like, it's all I just, I just want to know where you had it. And he threw me out. And then I just told him I just wanted to have a conversation with you. Again, didn't cuss, didn't scream or anything really. And then Vic came over, um, said what he had to say. And that's kind of it. I mean, I'm not trying to get thrown out of the first inning in Colorado, uh, obviously. Um, so it's a bummer, man. You know, it could have. I don't know, I could hit a double on the gap or a homer and, you know, the game's changed, right? Um, but, I don't know, just just, just kind of bummed that it even happened because it just, I don't, I don't feel like it should have. It, no, I mean, it, it should not have. That's reality of it. It should not have happened. And it is solely on the umpire who is responsible for that mess. Now, I don't think he was prepared. The umpire, that is. And that's your fault. That's your fault. All right, I will look at something. I got two examples of this, right? I've been in the radio industry now for about five or six years or so. And when I was first learning about the, the craft and, and just about the industry and all, something I learned early on was you need to be prepared sometimes over a four-hour show, Monday through Friday, to have a bad segment. Because you're a person, you're a human. There will be times where maybe it's not your best segment. And what you can have happen is let that take over your mind because I am very dedicated to this. I am very passionate about it. I could do a four-hour show and for three hours and 50 minutes put on excellent radio and entertainment, but then there will be 10 minutes that I look back at and would really like to have back and think, hey, I just wasn't sharp there. I would want. You can't let that crush you. I'm prepared prepared to know that that's part of the experience I don't think that this man uh, this this umpire was prepared to manage that baseball game because you need to understand Bryce Harper's on the Phillies he gets a leash he's able to talk to me and forget where the ball went for a second right because I did see some Phillies fans disappointed that the that the superstar of their team elected to get so angry on a pitch that was actually a strike that's on Bryce Harper and it, and it's really not 
not. It's not. Nothing he did actually deserved getting kicked out of the game, even the helmet throw, because there's a reason why there's fines incorporated into it. Because, well, that would be the the punishment for the helmet throw. That would be the fine. So it is what it is. But to actually kick him out is ridiculous. So even if you are the umpire and you feel that strongly about the pitch being right, instead of kicking the star out of the game, you say, Bryce, you, first off, you let him get off a few things. He wants to talk to you. You don't go, eh. Bryce said the ump went, eh, eh. You go, eh? You're a nobody and you go, eh? When a star is trying to figure out your strike zone, where was that? Was it in? Was it low? Was it where? where, where? Let's talk a little bit. You let him get some things off your chest. And then by the end of it, if you feel that confidently about your strike zone and your call, you say, Bryce, I understand you're frustrated. You can go take a look at it at the iPad. And then when you come back around, we'll talk. All right, go look, take a look at it. I believe it was a strike. I'm confident that it was a strike you can go back you could take a look at the box and then you can and then we can talk and, and you'll see exactly where I'm at here you, you got to handle it better your job is to manage the game and if you can't take something like that then you're too thin-skinned to even be in that position so here's my second example of just being prepared on how to do your job right and each field is different but for my field you have to be prepared just in general I'm always prepared that man not prepared Let's go to Tom Brady. I heard a recent clip of Tom Brady saying that he approached every single practice like it's the Super Bowl. So when he's in the Super Bowl, it's just another game. Once again, the preparation failed this man because he's not understanding of what guys may talk to me, what guys might ask questions, what guys get a little longer leash. If there's no cussing involved, if there's no Kyle Schwarber throwing the bat and pointing at both of the benches and freaking out, there's times where it's warranted and there's times where I can maybe live with it. If it's a situation where the offense is dead, it's through eight innings, your team looks lifeless, the strike zone's out of whack, and you want to show your displeasure to try and inspire the boys, we see coaches take this tactic all the time in any sport, really in the NHL or or the NBA, let's get teed up so maybe that could show some fire and light something under my team's ass. If a, if a player wants to do that at some point and take that one for the team, then by all means, then you acknowledge that that one was deserved. You earned it. But this one was not earned, and uh, it, it just it can't happen. It can't happen. So one of my callers on Friday's radio show said that he's got a different perspective than me, which is totally fine. And it was an older gentleman, and he said that part of the reason why he thinks Bryce Harper just needs to be better and it's him controlling his own emotions is it's bad for the kids. And Bryce needs to know because it's bad for all the kids watching, all these little leaguers that grow up and want to be Bryce. It's a bad look. And because he needs to think of the kids, he can't do that. I think it's important to be role models in your cities, I think people should look up to Brandon Graham. I think people should look up to Jalen Hurts. I think people should look up to Bryce Harper. I think that there's a lot of people in professional sports and the way that they approach their job, their professionalism, that's all true. That's not number one on the list. Bryce Harper's job is to win baseball games. And the reason why Bryce Harper is as good as he is is because just like Tom Brady used every practice like it's the Super Bowl, Bryce Harper doesn't take a pitch off. So to us, it's just a random game in late May. But for him, that at bat is just as special as a 2-1 count or a 2-2 count or a 3-1 count in the NLCS on the road in a game six scenario. And the reason why this team is off to the hot start that they are at is because the way that Bryce plays is very motivating. The way that he plays, it rubs off on everybody, and they are angry and mad that they did not win a championship. They are attacking every game like it's a championship game, and that is significantly more important than little Jimmy up in the stands. I'm sorry, little Jimmy, that falls behind winning and then falls behind just being you out on the field.
build. You play the way you play. You are the way you are. Bryce, be you, and then others will either follow you or not. If kids love it, then so be it. But, dude, uh, trust me. I- I'm sorry. Little Timmy and his Little League team should never be in the mind of Bryce when he's in that batter's box trying to uh, win a damn baseball game. Uh, it- it just It's ludicrous to me. But there were a lot of callers that actually thought that it was on Bryce because Bryce has been ejected X amount of time, 20-something time. Doesn't mean that they're all his fault. This this is inexcusable, inexcusable from an umpire. You, you cannot throw out a major league player for what he did in a game. <laughs> I mean, these are the same umpires that thought that Boone for the New York Yankees was cursing at him at the dugout at the top of the steps, but instead it was a fan who was ripping the umpire right above the dugout and kicked out the manager and doubled down on it and that whole thing. These these people are atrocious. They're they're garbage, absolute garbage. So just because there's a total number of Bryce Harper ejections, that doesn't mean that they're all right ejections. They're they're not. They're not. And I'm absolutely defending what Bryce did. I hate to spend so much time on that when there are so many other key pieces to this team that I'm enjoying right now, but I can't let it off my chest that when Friday came around, after pretty much every single game at this point is must-watch television, they were winning at such a high clip, you wanted to see if it would continue, and it would be nonstop, so it was right in front of your face, here's another Phillies game, no matter who the opponent is, the Rockies are not must-watch TV, right? So if you were just a random average team or good team, the series against the Rockies that that start at 8 40, 9, 10, and these late games that end at midnight or 1 a.m. They're, they're not games that you have to watch, but they are when you are 37 and 14 prior to the first game of the series going down. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you wait all day long for it and then you get robbed of someone who can make magic happen every single time they're at the plate, yeah, of course it's going to bother me and I need to use this time to get that off my chest because I thought it was horrible. I really did. I thought it was bad. But that's my two cents on it all. All right. Here is... On NBC Sports Philadelphia, Amy Fadul and Corey Seidman breaking down the update on Trey Turner because we did get some bad news in regards to his status. Take a listen. Philly's roster depth has come to the forefront since Trey Turner's hamstring injury three weeks ago, namely of Mundo Sosa. Another big hit last night, Rob Thompson, had an update on Turner's recovery today. What more can you tell us on that? So Trey Turner showed up to Coors Field today feeling soreness and stiffness. He's about three and a half weeks since having suffered that hamstring strain. And yesterday at Coors Field, he increased his running intensity to about 90%, which is the hardest he's run to this point. So it's not all that surprising that he shows up the next day feeling a little sore. It's the first time he has reported this feeling during his ramp up process, but it alters the timeline for Turner a bit. Uh, He was tentatively scheduled to run the bases in San Francisco where the Phillies are Monday through Wednesday, but it does not sound like that's gonna happen. They're going to back off of Turner for a few days and just be careful. You know, they'd be being careful even if they weren't 38 and 15, even if Edmundo Sosa wasn't as hot as he is because of the way that hamstring injuries can linger and because of how important Turner is to this team in the long term. But, man, Sosa again last night coming through with that ninth inning triple. He's at 354 since the Turner injury. And Edmundo Sosa leads the National League with a 688 slugging percentage since that Trey Turner injury. That's a span of three weeks. It's pretty incredible. It's not like he's hitting a bunch of singles. It's been doubles, triples, homers, and Sosa now in 154 games as a Philly has an 805 OPS, which is about 20% better than the league average for a guy who's mostly billed as a glove first player. That's pretty wild to think about. Some of those numbers I didn't even hear. So it's pretty remarkable. And I don't think that we should be rushing any sort of Trey Turner uh, uh, return any quicker than it needs to be. This team's just fine right now. As Corey Simon just mentioned, through the roof is Edmundo Sosa stats right now. Not just serviceable, not just okay, not just good. His numbers are mind-blowingly savage. All right, now maybe it ends up dipping back to reality, and I think we're seeing this offense cool down the tad, whether it's Alec Boehm a little bit. And right now, I'm a big gut feel guy. I don't know what the actual numbers tell you where his run's 
batted in because the guy has knocked in so many damn runs. He's knocked in so many runs that it's just at such a crazy pace, but it just feels over a little bit of time here that Alec Boehm, uh, you know, has dipped a tad. You know, guys are starting to dip a little bit, but that, but that's kind of to be expected, right? It's how long is the dip or can someone like Nick or someone like Kyle Schwarber, if they can show power while Edmundo Sosa maybe goes back to his norm and then Bryce Harper rises and becomes super hot MVP level Bryce Harper and maybe Alec Bohm takes a step back. There's others that are trajecting up while some of your teammates are maybe going back to their norm who was already on their red hot surge if that makes sense. So that's what we'll be looking for. And there's a few things I want to hit on before we take a couple anytime hotline calls here. One, the Garrett Stubbs hate is irrational. He hasn't been great by any means, but I think he just needs time to sort of get out there and have some confidence. He hasn't really been given the opportunity yet. There was that little sequence where JT Real Muto missed a couple of games or whatever, but just let the guy feel himself out first. And once he gets one hot spike, then let's see what that becomes. And maybe this was a hot spike finally because, well, he changed that game. He stole the run, getting to third base, very savvy on the base paths, and then, of course, knocking in and Mundo Sosa later on in the late stages of the game. He really hasn't had that impact yet. An awesome gun down the second base for a beautiful throw right where the tag needs to be to get a runner. So that also happened. I just think it's too premature. He's a backup catcher. I, I, I don't know if the expectations of the backup catcher is fair and where it needs to be. And then number two that I want to throw out there is there's a lot of maybe ML, uh, MVP NL odds that are getting posted on some of these sports books, and Bryce Harper's name is up there. If I'm being honest with you right now to this point of the season, and things can change rather quickly, especially over a sequence of a week in this sport because numbers do bounce up and down. Uh, but I think the MVP, if we're just thinking of, I, I know he won't get the recognition nationally, that is, but I don't even think Bryce Harper has been the MVP of the team, let alone the National League. I don't even think he's been the MVP of the Phillies so far. It's got to be Boom, no, with all of his runs batted in and what he's done. I know there hasn't been a ton of power, but, I mean, we watch this team every single day. If you looked at their two numbers, yeah, Bryce has the home runs. Alec Bohm doesn't, but he's got the runs batted in. And I don't know, I just, I, I think the MVP so far of the team has been Bohm. So if we're going to project that out into a into a, a NL odds MVP, I, I, I think Bohm should be up there more than Bryce is. But uh, that's not a, a big storyline. It's more just a my storyline, I guess. But okay, let's go to the Anytime Hotline and take a listen. Let's start things off here. Let's do it. What's up, bros? I just want to talk to that one guy who hates Aaron Nola. Look, Aaron Nola didn't have his best stuff tonight. It happens. Pitchers aren't going to pitch amazing every single night. But I want to tell that guy something. Aaron Nola is one of eight pitchers, eight pitchers in the entire major leagues, who has thrown over 65 innings and has less than a 3.05 ERA. And guess what? Two of those other eight play for our team. You can't expect Aaron Nola to be perfect. And the guy that says he's not clutch, go ahead and check his playoff stats. He's balling out. It's okay if you don't like him. Just admit it. He's balling out. Let's go, Phillies. Go win. I actually think it's pretty ridiculous that he settled down the way that he did and posted a quality start because those first few innings, I saw some of his off-speed pitches. They were way off the plate. They were in the dirt. They weren't even competitive. His location looked off. And I really want to give a lot of love to this bullpen, as we should. But they've had it easy, and I say that in a good way because some of the starters, if you look through some of these series, Sanchez goes seven, Nola goes seven, Wheeler goes seven. You don't have to clean up much. Now, when they do, they do. I mean, Taiwan Walker couldn't get out of the fifth inning in his most recent start, and guys like Matt Strom have had consecutive innings without getting scored on. 19 and a third. The numbers just keep rising. It's absolutely outrageous. So I'm not trying to act as if when they were asked to do more, they couldn't. But I'm saying the, our starting pitching has been one of the best staffs in all of baseball to start the year. And the reason why is they're getting a lot of length. 
So when they're getting a lot of length, your bullpen is being saved each night. One guy, two guys get saved each night, and then you look at that over a three or four game span, the amount of miles you saved on your guys is very important. So I know Nola didn't light the world on fire, especially early, but to get to that six inning mark for him and Ranger Suarez is absolutely important and cannot get overlooked. So I like the fact that the Aaron Nola hater somewhat has a personality on this show. I don't. I mean, I don't because I don't agree with them, but I'm uh, I'm glad that we have the Aaron Nola support because um, I, I, I do think that we go a little overboard with him in, in totality. Nola is very controversial. He's hit the Ben Simmons status, the Carson Wentz status. You want to throw a controversial topic out there, you say, hey, how good is Aaron Nola on a scale of 1 to 10? Then you let the debate begin, if we're being honest. It, it, it could be that simple sometimes. All right, let's hear from Sean. Yeah, that was pretty Euclid today. I mean, Rain Ranger Suarez, much like Aaron Nola, had trouble settling in. Once he found his way, he looked like the Ranger of old, but he dug them too big of a hole with a little help from Alan Bohm on a bonehead play at third, but they just didn't hit the ball this entire series. I mean, they just, you know, the game that they blew the other night, they only put up, what, two runs on two solo homers? Yep. I mean, they did nothing against the vaunted starting Colorado staff of Ty Block, uh, you know, and whatever other garbage they threw out there the last couple days, Cal Quantrill. I mean, just, just awful. I mean, they're bringing in bullpen guys whose earned run averages are over seven, and the Phillies can't lay a bat on them. One of those weird series that happens in baseball, you hope they bounce back, but I know they have all kinds of trouble winning in San Francisco. Not this team, baby. Not this team. Maybe other teams. All the worries that I've had in years past, all the worries about specific teams, the Miami Marlins, the Arizona Diamondbacks from the McCutcheon year, the Pittsburgh Pirates from the McCutcheon years. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, 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 This is different. So we can't tie together previous things with this unit, Sean. We can't. Now, I want to take a look at the standings real quick before we wrap things up. The Atlanta Braves are 30-20, and 20, and I feel terrible for Ronald Acuna Jr. I mean, that's that's horrible stuff. It's horrible stuff. I really hope that it's not as bad as it's indicated. I haven't seen any updates on it. I just saw the clip online in the slow-mo, and it's just horrible. You, you never, ever, ever want to see someone go down like that. But the Braves did lose the series to the Pirates. They did drop two of three to the Pirates, the 24 and 28 Pirates. So, for whatever that's worth. And they lost to the Padres in a series. One of the game was postponed, so they went 0-2 to the 500 Padres. Oh, no, sorry. That was a... I, I apologize. The way it loaded was a little weird. They played and lost three out of four. Excuse me. They lost the series three out of four. They lost the first three games of the series and then won the final game, which was game two of a doubleheader where the Padres are probably a little tired from all the winning and said, okay, Elena, you can have one of those. That's why you value the wins and all the wins against teams that are under 500 and this and that. Come on. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much. Appreciate it. It stings, but we'll be all right. Thank you all so much for the love and support, and I'll catch you on the next one.